Hey everybody, it's Kenny Conklin. How's everybody doing out there? Uh, well, I guess you might have seen a little difference at the beginning of the video with Sci-Fi Fantasy Builder International. That is um, going to be hopefully a new digital magazine with a limited run print magazine. The idea behind Sci-Fi Fantasy is I want to keep all my sci-fi stuff separate from the military and civilian and all the other builds. Now if I could only figure out on YouTube how to make a second channel and move all the science fiction stuff to one channel and keep all the military stuff on another channel, I don't know if it can be done and I don't know if I start another YouTube channel if I can move those videos over or not so probably just gonna keep them under there and uh, just change the banner maybe, I'm not sure. But that's what's going on right now. I'm trying to do a fundraising campaign to get the magazine off the ground. Uh, we've done a digital magazine before. I'll put the link to that in the description. This way you can check it out and see what the magazine would be about. Um, it's the, the first digital magazine is, is mostly military. There wasn't any sci-fi in there and I got a little ribbing from a buddy of mine out there about that. But just to give you an idea how it would look and how it would feel and what we're striving for. But anyway, <clears throat> excuse me, enough about that. Uh, working on the Kazon again over here. And let's get to show you not really much because I'm still sanding and puttying everything up. And there's the workbench. And let's bring this guy over here because my little buddy, my little cameraman of late is inside playing Xbox with his buddies from school. So, Right now, all I'm doing is puttying up all, if I could get the wires out of the way, all the seams. I had to do all of this over here in the back, and I still gotta sand all that down. I'm moving it around way too much, but that's all gotta be sanded if I could get the lights right. So I'm gonna be hitting that. I got still got a few places I gotta I gotta putty up on it. And actually, on the nose, if I can get it in focus, this doesn't actually have to be puttied. I was gonna put putty all that up and get it straight, but on the box art from the uh, studio model, the the spaces in between the main ship and the nose of the ship actually has this crease in there. So I get to leave that and that's a little bit of puttying that doesn't have to be done. So I'm gonna to get to more sanding, um, hopefully get it all done in a little while and then we'll shoot some primer on it and I'll show you what I'm gonna to do to keep the lights from getting ruined with paint. So we'll be back in a little while. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, yes, I was doing the sanding and everything, didn't get to finish the video. So we'll finish it off today, but I did get it puttied up. Uh, I got her sanded and now We'll show you what we're going to do with this little case on over here. So, nobody's home but me, so I don't have a camera person. And I get to see me looking at the, uh, the camera. Okay. So, what I've been up to, as you all know, on this, this guy has been puttying and, and sanding and getting all this, all this together. Now what I did is I, I cleaned the model off itself uh, just to get my fingerprints on, off it and everything else before we prime it today. So on go, the latex gloves. Now if you don't use latex gloves, I suggest you do. Go to CVS, Walgreens, whatever uh, place you have that sells <coughs> cough syrup and all that other good stuff, aspirin, Advil, you name it. Because once you got it clean, you don't want your fingerprints on there or the oils from your hands on there anymore because you're just gonna, you're just gonna mess up your paint job. Ta-da, Dr. Conklin in the house. Okay, now, it's clean of all my fingerprints and everything like that, but what I like to do 
is after sanding and everything, you never know what's getting clogged up, so. We'll kick on the airbrush. And just take your airbrush. Nothing, uh, no paint or anything hooked up to it. And just spray, I'm sorry if you can't hear me. Spray the air into all the cracks, crevices, wherever you were sanding. Just make sure everything is off of there. You don't want to have to go back and sand again, which I'm going to have to after I prime, because I'm sure there's going to be some spots that are uh, no good. All right. I'm going to put the cap back on here so I don't ruin my needle. This Badger airbrush, it's the Crescendo 175T. I have for about, oh geez, I'm trying to think how long I'm married to my wife, so I probably have that thing like 15 years or something like that. It's done me well, but I need to get a couple more airbrushes. I live and die by Badger. Everybody has their own preferences, but I love Badger airbrushes. Okay, so now what we're going to do on, on this guy here is before we prime it up, I want to make sure that I have all my lights and everything sealed off before I prime it. And then if I prime it without doing that, as you know, we're going to lose our lights. So let me see. I need two things. I need this. I told you about this before. It's the Silly Putty, which is nice because I've used it so many times for painting. And once the paint is on there, it dries up, and then you just do it in a little ball, and everything will uh, everything will mush into it, and you can use it again and again and again. All right, this is a little tough with the gloves on, but what I want to do is I want to take the silly putty, and I need it smaller than that. I'm going to put it into any holes, not the lights, just any holes that are open, because I don't want. I don't want paint getting inside. And I'm not worried about covering up the uh, the outer surface of it, because some, some places you're going to have to use your paintbrush and touch up certain spots, even around lighting and stuff like that. You're going to have to make sure that it's... it's uh, all done up nice after all your hard work. As you see, it's a little a little bit of a pain in the butt with the latex gloves on, but I'd rather have the latex on my hands than my hand oils on my model. And this stuff is easily plucked out. I know a lot of people like to use wet with tissue paper and stuff like that. Hey, that hole's actually a little bit bigger. So I can use this on this guy over here. You can use whatever you want to pluck this stuff out. And it's great. And then when you're done, you can make believe you're a kid again, go get the Sunday comics, roll it on there and put the co comics on, on the silly putty. And I picked up the Silly Putty, a whole bunch of them, over at Michael's. I'm sure like Hobby Lobby or something like that probably has it too. Whatever you got by you. But I got I got Michael's by me. So that's what I go to and grab. My hands are sweating. I don't have the AC on because I want you to be able to hear me. And this is much, much easily done with with bare hands than latex hands because nah, see that piece is way too big I'm gonna end up covering too much and I don't want to hand paint that much on here of course there's always one that's going to give you a problem. Never fails. 
And when I start running into problems like this, this is where my handy dandy cocktail toothpicks come into play. Shove that guy in there like that, the toothpick. And bingo. Everything is everything is sealed off. Except for my two thrusters, which have lights in them, and we don't want that to happen. <laughs> yeah, I don't want paint going in there because then I'll really be cursing. And the New York will really come out of me. And you guys will be like, yo, dude, you curse a lot. Uh, try not to. Try not to, because I got my little guy in the house sometimes while I'm doing this, and I don't need him picking up any more words than he already knows from school. It's incredible what they learn at school, besides reading, writing, and arithmetic. Okay, and one more to go, and then we'll show you what I use for the lights. Sorry this is a little boring. I didn't think it was going to take me this long. But of course I'm filming, so of course it's going to take forever. And like I said, this stuff you can just push in here, and it doesn't, doesn't stick, doesn't leave a residue, and it, you can pull it out very easily. And there we go. Okay, well that's sealed up, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, now for the lights, what I use, shake it up a bit, shake it up, shake it up, is from Vallejo. See if you can see that. Vallejo's liquid mask. Uh, it's a natural resin, and the port number on this is, I think, 70.523. But it's an excellent product. You throw it on there, it's going to cover up the lights, and we'll have no problem, problem spraying this. Let me make sure this is an older bottle. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, on my. Let me get that over here. On the uh, fiber optic, I just take. Oh, see? Did too much. Just take it use a toothpick whatever if you got a little paintbrush I'm not worried about getting this all over right now because so I'll let it dry and then I'll pluck off what I don't need or I got paper towels handy we can wipe off the excess sometimes you can use a not sometimes if you want to you can use a brush and what I do with this stuff a lot of times is I'll uh, my wiring my wiring I'm all hooked up and I forgot what I was gonna say what I was gonna do with this stuff oh I'll let it dry make sure that the whole the whole window or the whole light is covered. If it's not, I'll go back and I'll put a little more on there. Just to make sure that we have everything sealed up. And I hope I'm in frame. Because I don't have I don't have my little guy with me today. He's in New Jersey with his mom and his grandparents. Going to Smithville check things out and have a good time daddy stayed home okay those are done same thing on the big big guys just take it take your toothpick paintbrush whatever you're gonna use see I'm not worried about this big square because I have once I do paint it I'm gonna take the masks off the yellow lighting and I'm gonna put down um, 
I'm going to cut squares of masking tape. Put it down there, this way they're all uniform size. Right now they're not uniform size from, from us cutting everything out. Air bubble, air bubble. And there we go, there's that mask. And then, uh, when you get the idea, uh, I don't know why the lighting is so bad today. Let me see if I can get it in there. Let me move my chair. Bring the camera this way a little bit, and hopefully, there it is. So that's the masking on there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish these up so you don't have to sit here bored. Uh, I'm going to go back, I'm going to let it dry, I'm going to go back, I'm going to put more on there, and then I'm going to take this guy outside and prime it and show you that when we come back, okay? So we'll see you all in a little while. Okay, so we got her primed up. Uh, I use, to me, a surface primer. I like this one the best for priming. And now I got to go around and uh, hit the spots like over here. It's not as flush as I thought it was with the, the putty on this side too. I got to get that down and a few other spots like a little dust in there and stuff like that. But overall, not too bad on the, the leftover work that we got to do on this guy. So I'm going to get that done, puttied up, um, sanded down again and then reprimed. Now remember, when you prime and you don't want to go more than two or three coats, this one I'm not worried about. There's not really that much detail that I'm going to lose with the primer, but the more primer you put on, the thicker the layers are going to get, and then you got to put your paint on and everything like that. So you want to try to keep your primer to a, a minimal amount. You don't want to lose detail, especially on the bigger ships that everybody's doing. And I guess you know that, but I have point. And of course, my camera stops recording on its own I have no idea why I guess it's a camera and it's not really meant for all this I got to get a, a video camera so I'm gonna do that I'll get it puttied up and uh, re-sanded and I think that'll be it for this video and then once that's done I'll show it to you and then we'll start uh, painting it I'll show you how I tape it up and stuff like that I am uh, pretty much single-handedly always give 3M a lot of money because I go through 3M tape a lot. If you actually check out my Facebook page, you'll see a CVN 65 Enterprise that I did. Hand painted the deck and, well, airbrushed the deck and everything and it's just taped to, <laughs> to all hell. So let me get on this. We'll finish this up and I'll get this video up on the, uh, the site. And let me say a proper goodbye to all my buddies out there. Thanks guys for watching the video. I'm gonna take care of this. We'll get it all painted up. Well, not painted up. Finish sanding, we'll get it all primed up, ready to go. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do the base on my own. The company that I'm talking to that has the acrylic will actually do it for me. I just gotta see how much they're gonna charge. They're gonna charge me an arm and a leg for uh, for doing it. I could do, do the base myself. I've done it before with the acrylic. It's not bad as long as you have the right uh, the glues and stuff like that to get it going but thank you very much everybody and i hope you guys check out the uh sci-fi fantasy campaign on indiegogo and uh if you do and you're interested please help us out let's get this thing off the ground and uh pass the word along to the modeling community thank you guys i'll see you soon bye